Hello there and welcome to our Year 11 Poetry Podcast. This is Miss Axman and I'm going to be talking to you about Percy Shelley's Ozymandias today. So the first thing you need to know is that Percy Shelley was a romantic poet who really only became famous after his death. And Ozymandias um, follows a traveler who talks about a statue standing in the middle of the desert. It's a, it's a king who really boasts about his power over a past civilization. However, the statue has now fallen down and crumbled away so that only his ruins remain. So here we go, Ozymandias. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the stand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal these words appear, My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. So I think there's three really key lines in here that we need to look at. First of all, when Ozymandias refers to himself as the king of kings, we've got a really powerful metaphor there suggesting that he is the most powerful of all kings. He is the one that has the most control and power, and this is going to link really nicely to Shelley's views on romanticism. Um... He also says, look on my works and feel despairs in a very challenging tone to other kings. And there's two ways that we can really look at this line. So one, the kings might perhaps feel despair because they will never achieve the same status as Ozymandias has and all of his power. Secondly, it may also suggest uh, they will feel despair when they look and see that his statue is covered in runes and that their power will fade just like Ozymandias' power has as well. I think a really third and final important line to read is, he says, I met a traveler from an antique land. So Shelley has set this up through a second-hand narrative to really emphasize how unimportant Ozymandias has become to society today. Now, Shelley, being a romantic, really rejected the ideas of man-made power. He said that it should come from within oneself and that nature is much more important than anything man can produce. And this is really what we see here when nature has been able to destroy any power left from Ozymandias himself. So we've got the idea that man-made power fades and really pales in contrast to the power of nature. Thinking about this key theme, the ideas of romanticism and the power of man compared to the power of nature, some really excellent poems that you might want to link this to are London, My Last Duchess, Storm on the Island, and Checking Out Me History. I hope you found this helpful, and thanks very much, your 11s.